What is up guys? Jake from OneHive here with our next attack strategy video and excited to bring you this one because it's been a long time and this was um, there was a video I put out a while back about La Loon or Lava Loon and it was back in the very very early days when we used hogs to take out a few air defenses and it was it was so at the beginning of this attack strategy uh, it needs to be updated it really has grown a lot since that even since the Go La Loon video Things have changed drastically, and it takes me a while to do these, and I apologize for that. Uh, but you know, it needs to be done. The what you're going to see here is going to be some different different types of Gola Loon. We're going to talk about cold blooded. We're going to talk about shattered, which is using two golems. Uh, cold blooded is using one golem, and we're going to talk about you know why you would choose the between those two. Uh, it determines how many lava hounds you bring. It determines possibly what you bring in your clan castle. Uh, we'll talk about all that stuff, but it really does uh, all depend on the base. Like many attack styles, this is so base specific, guys. You're looking for certain things. Every base has a weakness, and there are still bases out there that are weak to go la loon. Not saying that it's right for every base. Obviously, uh, hogs, you're going to see it more than anything else at this particular point in the game. Uh, here we are in August of 2015. So at this point, hogs are still king. But every war, you're going to see at least some of these because some bases are just susceptible to go all in. They're better for an air attack. The defenses are positioned perfectly, or the giant bombs are just really hard to path with hogs, and it's just better to take a shot at it from the air. Uh, but we're going to cover pretty much everything you need to know as far as how to do one of these attacks, what to look for, uh, when you're deciding whether this is the right attack to use and so on. We're going to look at three different bases like we always do. Uh, hopefully at the end of it, you will have a pretty good grasp of it and we'll get out there and get yourself some three stars. So let's get started, guys. All right, here we go with our first base that uh, Ostoku took out in a recent war for us. And just starting from the basics, guys, Gola Loon is a powerful attack because of the fact that balloons have the just massive amount of damage. If you can get balloons onto defenses, which obviously they're defensive target targeting troops, and you can get to get them on those defenses protected, then they can eliminate them very, very quickly, and the base will be crippled uh, in, a, in very short order. Now, the reason La Luna is possible, obviously, is because of the Lava Hounds. Before that, you couldn't just, you know, people tried to, you know, La, uh, Lunian, a base Lunian, uh, loons and, and minions and all those things that we used to used to see in farming attacks and you know it just is not a three-star strat because something has to absorb those traps something has to absorb those air defenses they can just take out balloons so so quickly so obviously you want to look at a base where the air defense is one you can at least get one taken out you know having four air defenses it's it's a lot you know especially with all the traps and the queen soul Every attack that you're going to see a Gola loon, whether it be a cold-blooded using one golem, whether it be a shattered using two, you are going to take out an air defense and the defensive queen. That is your primary goal and the CC troops. So looking at a base like this, obviously you've got the air defense, the queen, and even a little bonus of the air sweeper in close proximity. Now the air sweeper is not necessary, especially at Town Hall 9. You do not have to really even plan around there. You need to think about it, but they are really not much of a factor. This base could possibly be shattered and take out two defenses, uh, but really it's not necessary. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. But what Astoku does is just take out the one air defense, the queen, the air sweeper, a few surrounding defenses, and the CC troops. Now, the beauty of a C, uh, CB or cold-blooded is a lot of times like this, if the queen's exposed enough in this large compartment, you don't have to bring a jump spell, which allows you to bring four rage spells, which is very powerful. Uh, it's really nice also if you don't know what's in the clan castle because you can use one of those rages for your kill squad, your queen, basically, and take out what's in the CC with and use a rage on it. still have three rages left over, for your balloons when they're going through the base. So that's perfect. Uh, you see, he did bring some wall breakers. It's just going to bust through this wall, drop his one golem. Let's touch on this really quickly before we move on. You see that he did bring his golem in the clan castle. And in my opinion, uh, people might not agree, bringing a max golem is almost always, not a, not 100%, almost always the right decision over bringing a max lava hound. We'll talk more about it later in, in the video about why. But just in general, 
you want a nice beefy tank out in front of you because if you don't get the queen taken care of, if you don't get that first air defense taken care of, if you don't get the CC taken care of, your raid is over. That's that. There's no chance of you having success. So you want to go heavy on that. You want to ensure you're giving your heroes time, you're giving your kill squad time to get in there. Take out those three key things because that is the, the building block. That's the start of your raid. You've got to get it done. Uh, so he elects to bring that max golem. You've got to create a funnel, guys. Don't forget that. You see he's got four wizards. He's going to drop them on the sides here. Uh, take out these buildings. Just start creating his funnel so everything works its way in. You've got to make sure these troops are going where you want them to, even on an attack like this. Uh, Queen comes out, obviously goes down to the king pretty quickly. This is going to go down very quickly. Everything in this compartment is. CC troops come out, drop a nice rage for him. You see that he did bring a poison. Now you can, if, especially if you know what's in the CC, or if you know what's, um, if the traps are set to ground and you don't need that poison for air skeletons, you can definitely bring a haste for this attack. Obviously that's a huge benefit to balloons. Another thing we'll talk about later in the video but if you're going in blind, I still recommend taking a poison. Air skeletons can be death on your balloons if things fall right. If there's not lava pups in that area to help take out those air skeletons when they pop, you could lose tons of balloons very quickly. So having that poison on an unknown base is very, very important. If you know that the skeletons are set to, to ground, okay, bring the haste, obviously. But if not, bring that poison. I'm going to drop that rage right there for him. I'm going to take out the queen, take out the CC troops, uh, take out this whole area. Actually, gets an X bow, which is always a nice bonus to take it out. And then just start the Lava Hound attack. Now, at this point, if you haven't seen the video, the clockwise, counterclockwise deployment video, I'm 99% sure it's in the attack strategies uh, playlist. Check it out because all of these attacks you're going to be talking about, you know, going in that clockwise, counterclockwise motion. And that video will cover exactly why we do that. Uh, but... Astoku, Astoku is going to send in his first Lava Hound from this angle. Now, a lot of times you're not just going to send your Lava Hound right at the defense. The reason you do that is a couple of reasons. One, you want it to cover a lot of ground. You want it to soak up as many potential air traps, both uh, red and blue bomb bombs, as you can. But also, you want everything shooting at that Lava Hound. You want these defenses engaging it along the way, and then you're going to send your balloons in behind it. The whole thing about a Lava Hound attack and the type of bases you want to look for is if you look at this uh, this base right here, you're going to send in a Lava Hound there, and then you're going to send in a Lava Hound from this direction to come in at a different angle, soak up different bombs, and also have other troops in other defensive buildings engage that troop. These Once this Lava Hound makes landfall here, he stops at his air defense, he's going to be shooting at it. Nothing's going to be happening besides he's going to be taking damage. But look at this. All of these are in range. They're going to be shooting that Lava Hound. All of these defenses. Now what that allows you to do is send in your balloons untouched. These are not going to be shooting your balloons. As you work your way around the base and send in another Lava Hound, same thing. These defenses are all focused on your Lava Hound. You can send your balloons in untouched. Nothing's going to hit them. That is the real power. The Lava Hounds are tanking for you. Your balloons are able to take out defenses untouched. And on top of that, you have all of these pent-up cleanup troops inside the Lava Hound. You want your Lava Hounds to bust. You just want them to bust at the right time. So that is the real strength of this attack. Your rage spells are very important on this as well. Be sure that you're using your rages to take out key defenses. You know, you look at this attack here, and, and most of this is taken out down here. You wouldn't want to drop a rage right here. This is not a high value area to drop it. There's only one defense that can even hit your balloons in that area. So be sure you're using it in a, in a smart area. Something like this would be absolutely perfect. That's going to help you take out all these defenses, the air sweeper, and get right into that air defense, which obviously is the most uh, immediate threat to your balloons. You know, Teslas are important, those type of things. Just be smart about where you drop them. You want your balloons traveling quickly. Travel time is a big deal for balloons. And then also attack speed, but think about it this way. Your balloons, if you drop two balloons on this on this archer tower, one drop from each of those balloons, so two bomb drops, this is dead. The rage, the extra bonus damage does nothing. However, if you drop two balloons directly on top of this expo and they drop both drop a bomb, that expo is not dead. Now if you've got a rage here, all of a sudden 
two bomb drops, that expo is dead. So it makes a big difference if you where you drop your rages and where you plan for those. So think about that during your attack. As far as air sweepers, they are nothing more than an annoyance. It's really nice if you can take one out with your kill squad. But look at the way he attacked this base and the way this air sweeper is pointed. Really not a big deal because as he works this counter, or excuse me, this clockwise motion, he's going to have balloons coming at this thing from behind. Yes, it's going to be pushing his lava hounds back basically and possibly some balloons but that's not a huge deal he's going to get it right from behind and take it out so let's watch a stoku do this cold-blooded attack we'll come back to the drawing board on another base and talk about another style all right here we go with the stoku's attack again just dropping the golem down that's going to start drawing fire allow him to plop down his king or his, his wizards create the funnel i love the angle he took on the golem you see that allowed that that far right archer tower to lock on which let his Wizards really just go wherever they want to to create this nice big funnel. Uh, wall breakers go in. It's going to open everything up. Then the king and queen are going to go down. You see right now the uh, clan castle starting to empty out, and that is what he brought one of his rages for. He's going to drop it right there, waits till the CC really locks onto his golem, and then that's going to send in the, the king. He's going to rush right through, jock, lock onto that defensive queen, take her out immediately, and there you see the air defense go down. So now it's just a matter of bonus. You know, whatever else he gets here is just a bonus, especially that expo, something set to air. That's perfect. Here comes the Laloon attack, dropping that golem at a nice angle, going to sweep through the base, soak up a lot of traps hopefully, didn't get any on that sweep, but you never know exactly where they're at. But you see the main focus there was that his balloons come in completely untouched. Look at this. None of his balloons have actually been targeted until that wizard tower final locks on when the uh, first lava hound exploded. Dropping those rages, pushing them into those air defenses, and again, just working that clockwise motion, sending in more lava hounds on those back end air defenses. Uh, just soaking up all that damage, soaking up those uh, bombs. And look at this right here, those balloons on the backside especially. Look at that. Nothing is touching them. Everything focused on the Lava Hounds. That is the strength of this attack. That's what's going to allow your balloons to take out all these defenses so, so quickly. And look how many balloons he's got left. Yes, he's got an air defense left, and it's going to take out some balloons, but not that many. It's not going to do it in time. Right there uh, gets the last defense taken out, and then it's cleanup. Look at all those beautiful pups in the background. As you're doing this attack, the cleanup is underway. That's what's, you know, those lava hounds sort of are dual purpose. As they're exploding and the defenses are going down, those pups are going to grab the cleanup. Let's go back to the drawing board and look at a shattered laloon. Okay, guys, shattered laloon. Uh, what would make you want to do a shattered laloon? What would be worth bringing that extra go on for? Real quick, again, referring to an old video, if you haven't seen it, go watch the how many golems should I bring video? That's going to really point you in the right direction of a lot of things you ought to look for as far as when to bring the second golem on a Laloon attack. In this attack, you're going to see the reason that Lala brings that second golem is for a few reasons. One, and this is touched on uh, quite a bit in the, in the how, to, how many golems to bring video, is her high level heroes. 25-25, she's going to get a big portion of the base as long as she can buy them time without being taken out. The second thing, obviously, is the location and the setup of the air defenses relative to the base. You see he's got an air defense here, air defense here, another bonus right there, and then the queen right there. Now, with the new jump spell, I mean, even before, honestly, this is, this is no problem. This jump is simple, so no need for wall breakers, anything like that. Lala can simply drop a golem to tank on this side, drop a golem to tank here, Wizards to create the funnel, king and queen, and everything moves its way in. The, the jump is going to go in. One thing I want to point out about this is these storages. That can cause a problem on Gola Luna attacks, and I would recommend really waiting on your jump. Let those golems take some damage. It's not that big a deal. The wizards will step up and take out some of those point defense that are hitting them, and then there won't be that much damage incoming. Make sure they're at least low, these storage health is at least low before you drop the jump. You don't want to drop it right away. Have your golems run out here in front, draw aggro from the CC troops, and your king and queen standing back here beating on storages. Not really what you want. So make sure you, you, you're you nice and patient with that. As they work their way in, obviously you're going to be able to drop a rage form if needed because you've got the, third, the three rages. Two is plenty if you're taking out, if you're doing a goal alone and taking out a section of the base and then going to uh, 
get the rest of Laloon. Two rages is plenty for that because Lala is going to take out this entire section right here. I think maybe even these defenses as well. All that base is gone when the when the attack starts. At that point, you want to look at again. You know, when you're looking at these bases, what will be covered? What will what will be targeting my golems or my lava hounds when they are deployed on the air defenses? And in this base, you see there's a couple of wizard towers out here hanging up by themselves out of range of a air defense. That is a on purpose thing. That's a thing to defend against Lalum. Uh, so what Lala does is really smart. Sends her first lava hound right from this direction. That's going to draw fire from those lava uh, for those wizard towers, and then just deploy a few balloons on them. You know, as the lava hounds swinging through, the balloons are going to do most of their travel time and take it out when they get there. Another thing that I love that Lala does is two Teslas pop here. Again, we've talked about how devastating Teslas can be to balloons. Sends her second and third, I think, a lava hound in from these angles and uses a rage right here. Perfect spot for a rage. All of these balloons she deploys here are going to get the benefit of it. These defenses are going to go down very quickly, as well as that, and the Teslas as they work their way into that air defense. So beautiful job there. Most of the time, well, I don't say most of the time, a lot of the time on a um, Shattered Laloon attack, you will deploy all of your, all three of your Lava Hounds on the same air defense and let them travel from there to that Blast air defense, not always, but a lot of times it's a good option simply because, especially on a, on a base like this where there's a lot of pent up, you know, it's a heavy section of defenses right there. You really want to make sure that those Lava Hounds are doing the tanking for the, all those defenses so your loons remain untouched. You could have saved, the, she could have saved the, the second one, or excuse me, the third one, and just sent it in right here. Now, one point thing to point out is that Lala did bring the Max Lava Hound in her CC. Now, this illustrates the point of why I say almost always is it better to bring the golem. If your heroes are low level, then you need that extra time to make sure everything is taken care of. If your heroes are high level, it gives them more time to take out a larger section of the base. And a lot of times, more times than not, on a well-executed Laloon attack, one of, at least one of your Lava Hounds is not going to explode. You don't want that. Those are your cleanup troops. So having the lower HP in many cases can actually help you. You're going to see at the end of this raid, when all things are said and done, Lala actually has two Lava Hounds up. Uh, I think one might bust towards the very, very end, but everything, you know, not a lot of chance for cleanup on that. So pretty much always bring that, that Max Golem in your CC. I think it's going to help you more times than not. Um, again, beautiful rage placement right there. Uh, high value rage, and then I think she drops the second one down in this area. Getting those uh, balloons into those air defenses really quickly, that's a big part of it. And again, bringing the poison in case those air skeletons pop. Let's clear all this out of the way. Watch Lala do the shatter. All right, here we go with Lala's attack. Again, just looking at the base, she's going to come in from the side there uh, about 10 o'clock, somewhere in that range, and just start sending those golems down. Let those beefy heroes do their thing. Obviously, you have to create your funnel. You know That's something that never changes on these attacks. Right there, the queen goes down. Uh, really wants to get into those storages very quickly because, again, you don't want the golems getting out too far ahead of your kill squad. That's going to allow them to take way too much damage from that CC, from that king and queen that are right there handy. Uh, I think maybe the, the jump was just a few seconds uh, a little early, but things did work out really nicely. The king came out, drops that nice rage, Everything starts going down pretty quickly, but the balloons do get several bomb drops off on that golem. You see busted the golemites right there. Uh, but finally, everything gets taken care of. The king runs in, takes the queen out. Uh, one air defense already out. The second one about to go down here in just a moment as the queen locks on right there. Boom. Now, everything's taken care of. Again, at this point, everything from here on out is a bonus. You see a very large section of the base taken out. That's the power of that second golem. What you get for it is ever important. Uh, Lala gets a, a big section of the base for that. You see 30%, a third of the base taken care of before the Lava Hounds even start in. I like that she did drop a few balloons before she even dropped her Lava Hounds. Lava Hounds are much faster than balloons, uh, so they're going to get out ahead and let those balloons get a little bit of travel time out of the way as the Lava Hounds get in range of the defenses. You see those Teslas popping, that perfect rage placement right there, uh, and then again just reinforcing those as those Lava Hounds start to bust, reinforcing with her second and third Lava Hounds right there. You see they're going to move their way around. The 
Lava Hound, where the most health gets out in front. So now the air defense is, is targeting that particular Lava Hound. So that one that was almost dead is still not busting. She's still not getting the benefit of those uh, those pups. And everything, as the balloon sort of just the angle everything's tanking, uh, taking, the balloon sort of stay out ahead. Uh, right there, finally, at the very, very end, she does get one to bust. But you see she's got a Lava Hound with basically... What a lot of health, not going to bust. She does not get those cleanup troops. That's why I say it's better to bring that extra high HP golem and get those uh, get those extra buildings she might have gotten with her kill squad. Let's go back to the drawing board, look at one more attack, and then we'll wrap up. All right, guys, the last one we're going to look at is Jag taking out a base with a shattered. But one thing I wanted to focus on that we haven't talked about yet is the use of, use of haste spells. And Jag does it pretty nicely here. He did bring the poison because this was a first attack and did not know whether the air skeletons were set to ground or air or what was in the CC troop uh, or the clan castle, defensive clan castle. So needed to have that just as a safety net. Uh, but if you know those things, if you know you don't need it for air skeletons and you know you don't need it for the CC troops, bring, I mean, he could even bring a third, you know, a third haste spell. They are very valuable on these attacks. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But also another thing to notice on this base is the, Air, uh, expo set to ground. 90% of the time you're not going to see this at Town Hall 9, but if you do, uh, really give it a good look for Gold Island because it could be a pretty easy attack for you. Now again, the Queen set really nicely between two fairly exposed air defenses, so no question that the second Golem's worth it, what he's going to bring here. And you see these, he's not going to get much besides that. Um, You've got a wizard tower here, that's nice, but look at this. He's going to get uh, cannons and mortars. Still worth it for that second golem to get even just that air defense. If you're going to take out the queen, two air defenses, and the CC troops, it is still worth it, especially on a base like this with the expo set to ground. Uh, but I, don't, I really don't think it would have mattered. Just comes in, you know, golem, golem, starts to create a uh, wizard, create the funnel, drops the king and queen down and obviously a jump spell to let them into that defensive queen. Now, once they step in, CC troops are going to start coming out, and he drops a rage for him. So he's only got one rage left for the balloons plus the two haste spells. That's plenty. It's okay. You don't have to have a lot of rage spells. Most of the time, uh, one or two will get the job done. If you have enough balloons, 16 loons, that's plenty. So once this all goes in, CC troops start coming out, drops the rage spell, uh, the King does get taken out pretty quickly, but luckily a golem does stray this direction, is doing a lot of tanking for him, and uses the queen's ability just in time to take out the dragon, and then immediately she grabs these two air defenses. So all that goes down, uh, you know, time to get the attack underway, and I love the way he did it here. Sends a lava hound all the way from this angle. Now, the reason you, you do that, guys, is a few reasons. One, again, because you're going to soak up any potential traps. You want to look for potential traps. You know, look at this little space right here. This air sweeper is, is pointed this direction. High probability of a trap being right there, an air trap. That's just the way people think. They think, okay, I'm going to put a trap there. Someone tries to loon this from the backside. It's going to take out their loon. So you want to really look for things like that and deploy your lava hounds in a way that could soak up those traps. Another thing that I love is he sends one loon on this Wizard Tower. This Wizard Tower is actually focused on a lava hound, or excuse me, a golem that was left over there, or a golemite. Look for things like that, guys. Sometimes you never know. You might see something that you could slip one in and get a real easy trade while the attack is going on. So very nice by Jag doing that. Then just starts reinforcing with balloons. As he gets to this point, he drops his second lava hound from this direction, and two Teslas pop here. Again, perfect place for your rage. You see that big group of defenses there? That's going to allow these lava hounds, or excuse me, these balloons to get through these defenses very quickly while the lava hounds are still tanking and get them propelled to that air defense uh, really, really nicely. So excellent job there. Uh, Jag does do the same thing, brings the uh, max lava hound in the CC. I still have to say that's a mistake. I'm not the expert on La Lunion, but just to me, more times than not, uh, it's, it's probably better to go the other direction. One of the reasons he might have done that is because of the ground expos, uh, having that, you know, set to ground, they're going to go down more quickly than they would have, and he really, you know, needs more tanking on this end, I guess. But again, I probably still would have brought the Max Golem. Uh, last Lava Hound comes in from this angle, just going to go in again, just soaking up damage. I probably would have even come at it a little sharper angle like this, because again, 
you as as the lava hound moves through, you can send your balloons in, and all this stuff is gonna is gonna target on that lava hound is gonna tank. Uh, but let's talk real quickly before we end this about the re the haste spells because using the haste spells is very different from using rage spells. You get a spot like this with Teslas, you want to drop that rage. You drop it right on top of it. You want it, uh, your balloons are gonna travel very quickly between defenses. Plus, they're gonna the damage is gonna be twice as much. So if even one uh, balloon gets a bomb off pretty much that defense is dead unless it's an expo or an air defense So you want to drop it right on top of it with a hay spell. That's not the case He does drop one right here, which wasn't my favorite placement on this uh, particular base I would have dropped it sort of like he did on the backside. He drops a haste right here and you'll notice he drops it in a way to where when the balloons come in, they're getting propelled really quickly into the defenses. It's not so much about having it over the defenses more than between defenses or leading to defenses. Uh, another good place would have been, especially with the Lava Hound coming through, another good placement would have been like right in this area. That would have, as these buildings went down, it would really propel these Lava Hounds uh, real quickly into those next few defenses. But this works as well because as the Lava Hounds, or excuse me, as the balloons get over the defenses, they are still in range of, and still in the radius of the haste. And when they leave, like most spells, like all spells, they are under effect for just a few more moments when they leave. So they really get to these defense, next few defenses uh, pretty quickly as they exit the haste spell. So good usage there. Again, this one I don't think you got a lot for, but just remember when you're planning and when you're using your haste spells, you either want them out in front of defenses so that your balloons get to them quicker or between defenses so that as one goes down, they're going to get to that next defense just ASAP. Uh, so remember that as you're doing it. Let's clear all this mess out of the way. We will watch Jag do this and wrap up this video. All right, here we go with Jag's attack. Again, Golem's going down. You're going to do the tanking for all of those point defense there. Just let the wizards create that funnel and then allow the king and queen to move in to get the CC taken care of, the defensive queen taken care of, and obviously those all-important air defenses. So right there, uh, funnel is pretty much created at this point. As soon as that builder hut goes down, boom. Now everything's going to work its way in. You see this gold storage is about to go down. The queen is on those golems. That's perfect. All those... Cannons tanking, or the golems are tanking for all those cannons, allowed all this DPS to move in pretty much untouched. Now, after the queen's already dead, here come the CC troops, drops that beautiful rage. That's going to allow the queen to really work her way through some stuff and get onto those uh, defending CC troops and take them out. You see, finally she locks onto that dragon, and then here in just a moment as it goes down, uh, uses the ability, and then the next two things to go down are those air defense. Right around, turns around, grabs a Tesla just for good measure, and here comes the attack. You see the wizard tower targeting those balloons, or excuse me, targeting that golemite, drops a balloon one for one there, really nice, and that long angle uh, coming right there, soaking up some traps, sending that lava hound in, and then all of those defenses popping there, those Teslas popping, perfect placement on that rage. That allows them to go through there very, very quickly. Uh, you see, look how he's taking advantage of that archer tower up there, targeting that lava hound, and then sending in the last lava hound. Again, just sending in a few loons on the backside, uh, taking out all those defenses really quickly. Look at the haste spell there, and then on the back here, this haste that I really like. That allows those balloons to get there much quicker onto those first defenses, and then watch as they go down, really propels them to the next defenses. Gets that Tesla. No way he would have got that second Tesla there with that one balloon had that haste not been there. Uh, pretty much that's that, guys. That's that's. All I can teach you in this time frame about uh, Golot Loon, it is still a viable attack. You can still take out bases with it. You just have to look for these key things. Um, hope it helped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helps you get some three stars and win some clan wars. Until next time, Jake from One Eye, doing my best to help you guys suck less.